Today, there is a growing body of knowledge which has been generated through research and analysis of both normal human locomotion and the interruptions of this locomotion that cause fall accidents. Before we get too far into the program, let's take a look at some of the terminology which is important during accident investigations, hazard abatement, and safety engineering analysis. The National Bureau of Standards recognized the need to have some measurement of slip resistance of various surfaces. They developed machines to make these measurements utilizing some basic mathematics and laws of physics. Coefficient of friction has been determined to be the feature by which to measure friction. However, coefficient of friction must be measured on an inclined plane, such as a ramp. In most slip and fall accidents, it is the static coefficient of friction which comes into play in the initiation of a fall. To make that sound a little simpler, the static anti-slip coefficient of friction is equivalent to the point of action where the heel of the shoe makes its strike on the walkway surface. Dynamic anti-slip coefficient of friction involves those shoe contact events after the heel strikes. The accepted industry standard today, as adopted by underwriters' laboratories and the American Society of Testing and Materials, is that a static anti-slip coefficient of friction of 0 .50 or above is safe on a dry walkway surface. A reading below 0 .50 indicates an unsafe walkway surface. Without going into a lot of detail, there are three basic measuring devices. The drag type meter, as shown here. The articulated strut device, again shown in animation. And the pendulum device. The measuring devices aren't important in this program, but it's important to know these devices exist and can be used in your facility to determine the relative friction on walkway surfaces. Should you need the measurements for a legal action, the individual conducting the tests must be an engineer with coefficient of friction knowledge and qualified for such engineering. For our purposes, let's review some of the things you can do to help prevent slip and fall accidents. Let's begin with the outside of the building. A consistent sweeping program with either a push sweeper or mechanical sweeper can maintain a minimum level of dirt, grit, or sand in the parking lot or around entrances. Certainly, if it's wintertime with snow and ice, it's very important to keep the entrances as clean as possible. The objective is to keep snow and ice from the inside floor surfaces. Dealing with snow and ice outside is much better than allowing it inside because ice and snow will sit on top of the walk-off mat and when people come in they're likely to kick it onto the hard floor surfaces. Cleaning is very fundamental to slip and fall prevention, but the important part is to prevent as much slippery materials such as dirt, sand, ice, and snow from being carried inside. On the inside, the initial 15 to 25 feet from the entrance are the most critical. People entering your facilities may have oil, grit, or other substances on their shoes, and it must be controlled immediately upon entry. Walk-off mats are recommended. The walk-off mat wipes off and takes the moisture off the shoes picked up outside. The cleaner the shoe, the less chance of a slip and fall. Most manufacturers recommend that a mat should be long enough for four or five normal strides, or a runner about 15 to 25 feet long. Of course, it has to be wide enough to cover the entire entrance. The mat is the first step, but more important is maintenance. Frequent cleaning of the mat is necessary because if you fail to clean it when it becomes overloaded with oil, grease, sand, and moisture, it can't perform its footwear cleaning function. A loaded mat is worse than no mat at all. Daily maintenance should be no more than vacuuming and in some cases simply shaking the mat and cleaning the residue. Weekly maintenance should involve shampooing, 
or in some cases just washing the mat and allowing it to dry. Be sure to allow mats to dry properly or you may be applying moisture to footwear as it's walked on. One word of caution about floor mats, clean the surface under the mat. If this surface isn't clean, the mat can slip or bunch up and that can cause a tripping hazard. From all this information, you can guess that entrance mats are important. What about organizations that don't use mats? Be sure the entrances are kept very clean and the floor surface is not slippery. Don't forget the aisles as they have the most traffic. Oil, grease, and dirt residue can build up quickly on heavy traffic aisles. Hand trucks, forklifts, and other equipment can also add to slippery conditions. Here's a tip that almost no one thinks about, and that's contaminated floor polish or wax. Contaminated polish doesn't smell, so it's very difficult to detect. Maintenance persons should be trained never to pour unused polish back into the drum or container. The slightest bit of dirt can cause bacterial contamination, which can change the coefficient of friction. Another contaminator of polish is to use an unclean applicator. Using the same applicator or mop for wiping up spills and then using it for applying polish or wax is just asking for trouble. Now we get into a sticky situation and that's what type of wax you should use on floors to help prevent slips and falls. The very first thing an organization must do is make sure you know what wax is going on what floor surfaces. The chemical manufacturer can provide the proper type of wax with proper coefficient of friction for a particular surface. The problem arises when another type of wax is used or the proper wax is used on a different surface than that for which it was intended. Generally, floor waxes should have a good coefficient of friction rating and the supplier can help you make this determination. One of the biggest headaches is trying to balance the coefficient of friction rating of the wax between what looks nice and what is a safe floor surface. Usually, the higher the friction coefficient, the less scuff resistant and the less durable the finish is going to be. After you've chosen the proper wax, if you're using wax on a floor surface, is maintenance. Floor maintenance is extremely important. If you use a dust mop, be sure it's not treated with an oil type treatment. Oil treatment of dust mops is quite typical because it increases the absorbency of the dirt and dust, but when you leave an oily streak on the floor, you've increased the chances of slips and falls. While we're on the subject of oil treatment, watch out for oil-treated floor mats. You already know oil and water don't mix. Therefore, if your floor mats are treated with oil to increase absorbency, and if moisture is added, you have a major slip and fall problem. If you use wax on floor surfaces, you must control what goes on the wax, such as window cleaner from cleaning the windows. The spray falls on the floor and is invisible, but it's there, and it's very slippery. Floor maintenance is everyone's responsibility. If you see something on the floor, pick it up. Small pins, paper, trash, and other debris on the floor can be hazardous. Another condition that causes slips and falls is during floor maintenance. Stripping wax, soap and water, wet wax, and other maintenance procedures can be very hazardous. Be sure to place wet floor signs around the maintenance area to warn persons of the wet conditions. Other areas that need proper control are the restrooms and cafeterias. Wet floors in the restrooms create slippery conditions but also coats the bottom of the shoes with moisture. In cafeterias, there's always the chance of spilled beverages, which become very sticky and slippery on the bottom of shoes. Maintenance areas always have the potential for slips and falls due to oil, grease, and other residues. Floor maintenance and housekeeping become critical in these areas. Now let's take just a few seconds and discuss cleaning floor surfaces. If you're cleaning an oil spill, don't just wipe up the spill and run a dry rag over it. Oil, mayonnaise, and other oil-based products 
will seep into the floor surface, leaving a very thin film or molecular dimensions of oily residue. The most effective method of getting all the residue off the floor is to wipe up the spill, then use a dry powder cleaner to pick up any remaining residue, then wipe up the powder. If you fail to use the dry cleaner, oily residue inside the floor surface can be very slippery. Stairs are quite often mentioned in accident reports. Torn carpeting, damaged tread nosing, oily treads, and other factors can create potential accidents. Handrails are a must on stairs. Everyone should be trained to use handrails when ascending or descending stairs. Holding on to handrails can prevent a fall should someone lose their balance or slip on the stairs. Many serious accidents occur from falls off ladders. Broken or damaged rungs or spreader bars contribute to accidents, but more often it's wet or slippery footwear or slippery rungs of the ladder that cause the fall. Certainly, falls from ladders occur more frequently from persons using the ladder improperly, such as standing on the top two steps, which creates an overloaded center of gravity. The belt buckle rule is also violated frequently by persons stretching beyond their body's center of gravity, causing the ladder to overturn. One of the most important parts of any slip and fall prevention program is training. When you do something day in and day out for many years, it becomes a habit. Walking is a very natural thing, and we all tend to take it for granted. People need to be reminded to watch where they walk and to be aware of potential slips and falls. A pothole in the parking lot will not cause a slip and fall if everyone that walks by sees the pothole and goes around it. Of course, the pothole should be repaired, but there are many potential hazards that go undetected or cannot be repaired. It becomes the responsibility of every person to watch where they walk. It sounds very simple, but 98% of all slips and falls can be prevented if people just take the time to watch where they're going and avoid potential hazards. Now let's say you're walking from a carpeted area onto a tile surface. The friction on the carpet is much greater than the tile. When you walk onto the tile surface, you need to be aware that it has less friction and be prepared for it. Footwear can also contribute to accidents. High heels, certain leather on soles of shoes, even the popular tennis shoes can be very slippery on some surfaces, particularly if the bottom of the shoes have oil, grease, or other residue on them. There you have it. Slips and falls rank right up there as a major factor in injuries. It occurs at work, at home, and during recreation. Recognizing and correcting hazards, keeping work areas clean, and awareness on the part of everyone to watch where they're walking are basic prevention procedures, but they will work. Read any safety textbook and they'll always talk about the three E's, engineering, education, and enforcement. These three words certainly apply to slip and fall prevention. Engineering safety into floor surfaces and maintenance, educating employees to watch where they walk and take the time to think about safety, and of course, enforcement of safety rules. They're all important, and it takes everyone's cooperation to reduce slips and falls. Thank you.